morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another day of the video Darren how's it good today today we're back on campus <laughs> even though my term finished on Friday small change of plan has made it that I it uh, it makes sense for me to come to campus today today is now my last day on campus it's my final commute <laughs> as much as I got excited about it last time I said that um, so what's been going on today today I got up um, a normal time six o'clock uh, and slowly got ready getting ready was a bit weirder today though because obviously Laura's sister's asleep in the living room. <laughs> so I got up, had a shower, got dressed, like tiptoed into the kitchen, made myself a cup of tea, <laughs> which was the noisiest thing I did. And then like made my breakfast and stuff, snuck into my office um, to get ready and stuff. Uh, and then headed off, like Laura didn't even wake up. Grace didn't even wake up. It was like, <laughs> it was well weird. Um, so yeah, normally Laura's up like immediately as soon as I'm awake, but obviously she's not at work today because she's taking the day off for Grace. So. Just little old me getting up and out really early in the morning today. Um, and that's so I can come to campus. To be fair, it's only really so I can dodge the traffic. Like, I don't need to be in Bath until 11 tonight. But it makes sense for me to come to Bath... Uh, 11 this afternoon even. Jesus. It makes sense for me to come in, dodge the traffic, get a little bit of work done on campus. And then I need to walk into the city centre for 11. Um, there's obviously free parking on campus as well. I say free. I've already paid for it in advance. So, <laughs> may as well make the most of it. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go and hide in the library for a bit. Um, and do some work in there. Up until the point where I need to leave. I need to do some C. I haven't done a lot of work since like Grace has been around and stuff. Because obviously, like, socialising a bit. I'm host. I can't just disappear off into the into my own like little world. In that, I can. I just feel bad. I don't feel bad about going off and playing games. That's weird, isn't it? The term ended on Friday, so you're only expecting the keynotes to be in library today, <laughs> especially this early. This feels weird because I'm walking this way now. I normally turn left into the car park, but I'm actually turning right into the city centre. I just spent a good two and a half hours, uh, well, no, yeah, two, yeah, two and a half hours working in the library. Um, sorting out parallel stuff. Campus is actually a lot busier than I would have thought as well. I guess it is like the only Monday after. It's not busy by any stretch of the imagination, but like the library has actually got like a decent number of people in. Um, and I guess it is the first Monday after everyone's split up on Friday, so you get like third years and second years that hang about. But like freshers and stuff who don't really have that much work would have all left. Um, it's weird, because obviously like when we had things like Easter, I'd stay back because I used to work on, um, I used to stay on campus because I had to work in the city centre. Um, and everyone else went home. And it was like a death town. It was, it was like a ghost town, it really was. It really isn't like that yet. And I guess I just underestimated how many people would have gone home. Um, saying that as well, like the library, the only day the library closes is Christmas day. And every other day it's 24 seven. Like you can go in at any time. So pro there probably is like a strong bloody need for it, I guess. Weird. Anyway, I am now heading on down to Bath. Um, I'm going to the city center because I have a meeting with someone from a company called Altran. Um, this isn't like job interview based, this is from a final year project. Um, I saw someone from their company do a talk at the high, at the high integrity computer software conference I was at and I sent them an email after saying like oh I was really interested in the talk that you did um, but I'm interested in the fact that you're only really focused on like this bit like he showed like a diagram and it forked into two different forks and he spent a lot of time focusing on the right hand side of the fork my final year project focuses on the left hand side of the fork um, so I sent an email being like why and then this and this is what I'm doing um, and then someone got back to me and said that uh, like, they'd be interested in coming, like, I can come down and have a look around their offices, get to see what they do and all that kind of stuff. So, that's what I'm going to go and do. I'm relatively conscious of the fact that they're probably going to turn around and say, what you're doing isn't very useful. To which I'd say, well, it's not very useful to you. <laughs> My final year project is very much based on testing how effectively your tests are covering your code. So it's a bit like code analysis, code coverage, sorry, but better. Code, code coverage plus plus. So that's what um, I is doing, uh, essentially. And their thing was like, well, we do this, this, this. The reason it's not very useful to them is because they use a programming language called Ada. Um, 
or they use Spark or something like that. And basically what that means is you don't need to write unit tests or anything like that because you can mathematically prove all of your functions. You can mathematically prove that all of your functions are, in theory, bug free. I'd argue you can't quite cover everything with it, but that's by the by. That's my lecture up there. Awkward. You wouldn't recognise me though. Um, so, yeah. That's why they won't use a system like mine. Although I thought a company that does such safety critical stuff, they might need something like mine, which is why I emailed them in the first place. I'm fully expecting this meeting to be like, yeah, here's the offices, we're interested in it. Well, like, what you're doing is like, interesting, but no one will use it. And what they mean by no one will use it is nobody who writes code for airplanes will use it. <laughs> because, true change. So, um, yeah, like what they do is they make software for like flight control systems and all that kind of shit. So I was thinking before I got in touch with them that like they'd have a lot of code that can't really be broken. And the best way to do that is to make sure that all of your tests test every line of code. And that's more or less what my system can do. Um, but what they do instead is mathematically prove everything, which is really fucking irritating. Uh, but then um, my system is really good for people who use things like C Sharp or Java um, and have business logic embedded in really in like old pieces of code that they don't want changing. Um, like really crucial parts of the system can be tested with my system to make sure that you can't change that by accident. That's the uh, kind of what it is, and it's also kind of saying like. Oh, here's the code coverage. Da, da, da. Now, the reason I contacted them was one, because I was interested in what they were saying, and two, because there are quite a couple of companies that I'm talking to by IE3 that want to run my system against their code. And I thought it'd be interesting to run these guys against my code. Turns out they don't do any kind of programming language that I use, but that's by the by. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm gonna head down there, and I'm gonna have a little chinwag about that. So we're walking on into Bath. Um, because I'd rather walk down. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it is a nice walk down, um, but also I'm a tight bastard and don't want to pay for parking in town. I would much rather spend half an hour exercising myself walking up and down this hill than I would pay, pay four or five pounds to park in the city centre. Assuming I could park in the city centre. So, yeah, there's that. Oh dear, but after this meeting, I'm literally going to come back up the hill and then go back home. So, yeah, fun times. It's, been, it's gonna be a good day. I'm just hoping that this meeting isn't so much, like, you know, like so negative against what I'm doing, which I feel like it probably will be, but it'll be interesting to see what they have to say, even if they say, like, we'll never use your shit and we don't think anyone else will, because you don't get in contact with people who use who do normal stuff, you know, not like safety, like really fucking safety critical stuff. We have to mathematically prove everything. And arguably, although I don't really understand the, the programming language they use, surely you have to test how you've mathematically proved it. In which case, hi, <laughs> that's what I'm for. But anyway, it's by the by. Also, for my funny project, I've thought of a really fucking good idea. Like I've been trying to, I've been talking to Ben about like how I could sell it. And the problem with selling it is that it's quite an expensive function to run. Like, it's quite a heavy thing. Like, you could either, like, if you run it on a full suite of software, it could take a long time to come back and test everything because it's just so comprehensive. So, while one, one thing I was going to do to, like, reduce that is only test the newest stuff. Like, you do a batch test every month or so, um, but then you'd only test the newest stuff. Um, which in theory would work perfectly. Um, but another way of doing that is hosting it in the cloud on like Azure or something, and then companies paying like a monthly subscription, they hook into my APIs and my back end is it, then I could charge them monthly subscription fees instead of like a lump sum, here's the software, here's a license. Although I guess I could do a license to the software and then you wouldn't get software updates. I could do that, but that way round, they don't have to have any extra infrastructure in order to run it. Like it is literally a case of you sign up, I test your shit, and I let you know how good it did, as opposed to, 
you sign up, I give you the stuff. I can come around to your company and help you set it up, but otherwise, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. The problem here being that their offices are somewhere up there. Don't know which side of the street, don't know how the hell to get up there. Figure it out. Good job, I'm 15 minutes early. I think I have to go through the car park. Maybe if I go through here, I can pop up into that building instead of, um, like, trying to get in from the shops. I don't know, though. I've got no idea. Jesus found it nowhere near where I thought it was annoyingly it has now started raining however this is why I should have driven and parked in Bath otherwise that meeting was really good basically everything I'd said before now was wrong <laughs> they have some areas of their system where they try and prove it mathematically but only some areas and they have to do like quite extensive testing like I do which I assume they would um, so they'd actually find quite a lot of value in my system um, although it's a slightly different, like, the value to them is very different to the value it would be to all of the other companies I've talked to at the moment. Because they are, they do really critical stuff. Like, they have a lot of testing to do because of how safety critical all their code is. Um, so the reason they'd use it is very different to the reason I'm selling it to everyone else. And it was really interesting to have that conversation, like, as more of a commercial understanding of like how useful my code may end up being to some people. It was really good. I'm really glad I went to that. First thing about the rain now is that I've got to walk up this hill with my coat done up <laughs> and boil in the process. The summary of that meeting is that um, like they could use it. They would use it as a system. Um, although I was basically talking to like their director of testing. Um, and like he, he'd have to justify certain things in order to do it. Um, but there'd be many cases where in his industry it would become very useful. And he like shone a bit of light on some things it'd be really good for, which I'd never really considered. Um, mainly because I didn't realize it was a thing, but anyway. So there was that, he gave me some like hints on like other companies I can go and talk to. Um, pushed me towards places where I could get funding in order to start this as an actual company. Um, and then at the end he said like stay in touch because like um, we're really interested in it. Uh, but also we're applying for like certain kinds of funding for certain things that they're doing. And like they, if they get that they may be really interested in carrying on what I'm doing and also be able to get me in touch with people from different companies and I might be able to pitch it to them and sell it to them as well which is crazy <laughs> um, so he also fluttered the word sponsored as well essentially sponsor me to do it and start up a company to do it which would be crazy as well so like a, a shadow of I, when I thought of this idea I thought this is a genius idea and I think it could make a lot of money. And then I started talking to Ben uh, from Beth and Ben, because uh, he does business. And I'm like, if I want to start a business, I trust Ben, you know? So I was talking to him and he's like, well, what's the value of this system? And I was explaining it and I'm like, all it seems to do is cost a company a lot of money. That's all it really seems to do is just cost them more and more money. But it shines a light on what could cause them a lot more money. Uh, I'm trying to explain that to him and he's like, I don't really get it, but talk to that, that's like, well, you get value from here, from here, from here, and I'm like, fuck me, this is great. <laughs> that meeting has made that, my project, less of like a, oh, it, it could potentially turn into a business to look, create it into a business. That's basically what that came from. And I'm really happy about that. So thank you for that meeting. I think they will be a really strong contact in this world. Get my camera wet. Like a bit of a drown rat, but it's time to go home. And ladies and gentlemen, time jump, but we're going to bed now. Um, we, I came back home and like had lunch and stuff and then sat and did a little bit of work and then played some games with um, Laura and Grace before heading off to the train station to drop off uh, Grace from the train home. Um, and then we came back and we've just been like, we can't be bothered to do anything since. 
So we came back and we did things like we went, we had dinner, wrote a shopping list, went shopping. Um, I need to wipe this and plan my new thing on it. Um, but we just like come back from shopping and we got a lot of shopping. Um, <laughs> as a brief guide of how much shopping we got. This, don't know when it goes off on offer, but five for three pounds. I bought ten. Um, uh, so yeah, we, we bought a lot of shopping. Um, and then we came home and the problem with buying shopping is that you've then got to come home and you've got to put it away. And then Laura had to make sandwiches and it was just like, ugh, not much fun to be had all around. Um, but we're heading to bed now. Um, back to work again tomorrow for Laura and then I'm going to have a spring clean um, an organisation of stuff and then on the side doing some work as well. So it's going to be good fun. Um, I'm going to enjoy it. But yeah, up until then. I've also got to do stuff there as well. I'm tired. Catch you later. I also forgot to do yesterday's daily vlog. It's still on the camera now. Um, and I didn't notice until like half nine. So I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I'll just do it tomorrow morning. So I apologise. Two videos have been uploaded quite quickly. But there's like, obviously, while Thingy was here, it was like quite short videos in a way. So all good. Catch you later.